night at the Brandon Johnson mm -hmm. headquarters, but the celebrations might not be long because <laughs> now the work begins. He mm -hmm. faces a lot of challenges when he takes office. Yeah, the party might be over real quick, right? Joining us now, though, to sort it all out, North Central College political science professor Stephen Caliendo. Always great to have you with your insight. Great to be here. So off the top, uh, with Brandon Johnson emerging from a crowded field of nine candidates down to the two candidate runoff, it shouldn't be as shocking, but it's still stunning that he won the mayor's race to become the 57th mayor of Chicago. Considering where he started with his recognition and notoriety to emerge now as the winner, what is your take on that? That's correct. It was a crowded field and with some very big names, some big Chicago political names in the field. For him to emerge from that is really impressive. Um, I, I was, you know, as thinking about predictions last night as we went into it, my thought was it's going to hinge on voter turnout. We did not get a particularly high voter turnout last night. About 35 um, percent. Only about 30 percent. So the government professor says, well, well that's not okay. Uh, and I think that the Vallis campaign, if you would ask them at the beginning, would have said the lower voter turnout might be better for us. But as it turned out, Brandon Johnson turned out the right people at the right time. I, was the timing surprising? I mean, I think we, some people yes. expected a much longer night than we yes. had last night. I expected a much longer night for sure. I think there was some sense that the, the, the mail-in vote, votes that hadn't been counted yet were going to break Johnson's way. And so I think, and I'm sure both campaigns were probably thinking along those lines, when you get to 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, an hour, two hours after the, and, and, and give the Board of Elections credit, they come through so quickly yes. and so accurately with, I mean, we don't see all the stuff happening behind the scenes. We're just watching TV and watching it happen. Um, I thought if Vallis is going to have to have a five or six point lead going into that to withstand whatever was coming from the mail-ins, but as it turned out, it never, it never transpired. And we're talking about over 90,000 votes, but his camp recognized right away they know. we're not going to get to the finish line, so we're going to call, concede, and congratulate Brandon Johnson. Still, it was a very divisive campaign. I Indeed. mean, there was a fork in the road between these two candidates with public safety on the minds of a lot of Chicago voters. But Paul Vallis had some Democratic heavyweights lining up behind him. That still couldn't push him across. So as Brandon Johnson moves forward, what will be critical for him now to manage the city in the role of mayor? And as he said, even if you didn't vote for me, I'm still going to be the mayor for all of you. How is he going to do that? Both of the speeches last night were very uh, classic in the sense that they hit that w w unity theme, that Brandon Johnson has to say, even if you didn't vote for me, and, and we heard Paul Vallis just a moment ago had to stop the crowd because they're in the moment and they expected to show up at the hotel and they were going to have a celebration party and they realized they weren't going to. So the coalition that was put together for the elections is not the same coalition that can govern. It has to be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And so Brandon Johnson's got to get to work on that first thing this morning. So moving forward, I know we just got the election results in, but just last week, city council made a lot of votes. They were voting really be, mm. to be more independent from the mayor. How, will this make it harder for Johnson? What are your thoughts on that? It's going to be, you know, the, the, the city council votes, and we, we had so many runoffs last night. Remember, these are all new districts. And so even the folks who are returning to city council are returning to districts, some of them very different from the ones that they were representing mm. prior. And that matters in terms of how they vote. It matters in, in terms of the issues that they are, that, that they put first and foremost, their priorities, et cetera. And so you can say it's a new day in Chicago. It's not just optimism because there's a brand new, uh, brand new mayor. It's that it really is a new day in terms of government because even the folks that are returning are returning into districts that aren't, uh, don't look like the, the ones that they left. But never a dull day in Chicago politics, never that's for sure. Not at all. <laughs> Stephen Caliendo, we'll see you in our 6 o'clock hour as well to dive more into uh, what we learned last night. Thanks for your Great. insight. Sure. And to check out all the numbers and find out who will be representing your ward, or hear from the winners. Head to our website, cbschicago.com. We've got all the election results, plus a look at the issues at the polls. A step